Uh, so if, you rec if you'll recall from the previous section, the trigonometric integrals, when you have a, a power of sine and a power of cosine right next to each other, our strategy is to see which of the powers is odd and then let u equal the other one. So in this case, here we have an odd power of sine, so that means we should let u equal cosine theta and then do a substitution. Now, granted, the examples that we were looking at weren't like this, uh, you know, they weren't rational functions, but as it happens, the same, the same strategy is actually going to work, and for the same reason. So, so since the power, well, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if it's going to work all the time, but in, in this case, at least, it will. So let's let u equal cosine theta so that du is equal to minus sine theta d theta and consequently d theta is equal to uh, minus 1 over sine theta du. So now we're going two substitutions deep. And, of course, that means we're going to have to deal with our bounds again as well. So when theta is equal to 0, that means that u, which is cosine theta, so u is going to be cosine of 0, which is 1. And then when theta is equal to pi over 3, that means u is going to be cosine of pi over 3, which is uh, 1 half. Uh, yeah, 1 half. Uh, okay, so our integral becomes, so now the new new bounds are from 1 to 1 half. Uh, we still got that 3 sixteenths hanging out in the front. Uh, sine cubed of theta over cosine squared, but now cosine is being called u, so that's u squared. And then instead of d theta, I write all of this. So let's see, I'm going to bring that minus sine out front. So bring that minus sine out front. Like so. Uh, okay, now one of these signs is going to cancel. Uh, and also, uh, I like to write my integrals so that the lower limit is the smaller number and the upper limit is the larger number. So I'm going to take this negative sign and use it to flip these this guy upside down. I mean, that's not strictly necessary, but... For my, for my personal well-being, I would rather do that. That way, it always goes from smaller to larger. It also has it also gets rid of that negative sign, which is always nice. So one of those signs gets canceled, and we have du left over. Uh, okay, so we still need to get rid of this sign squared, but we can do that easily enough because we have a Pythagorean identity. So we can write that as. Um, uh, 1 minus cosine squared. So 1 minus cosine... So 1 minus cosine squared, but cosine is the same as u, right? So that becomes 1 minus u squared. Like so. And now finally we are in a position where we can divide both of these guys by u squared and then hit it with the power rule. So yeah, this is a cool example, I think, of uh, 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 you know doing multiple substitutions. Uh, let's see. So one over u squared becomes u to the negative two, minus u squared over u squared just becomes one. So 
So let's see, hit this with the power rule. This becomes u to the negative one over negative one. Uh, antiderivative of one is just u. So now evaluate it between the endpoints. Negative and a negative, I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to factor out that negative sign. Let's see. So this becomes 1 over u plus u. So that's 1 plus 1, which is 2 minus. Then when I put in 1 half, so 1 over 1 half is 2. 2 plus 1 half is 2.5, which is um, 5 halves. Okay, we're almost done. I didn't want to separate this into two parts, but so it goes. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's my microphone or my computer or what, but OBS tends to just stop recording audio if I go for longer than like a half hour, as, as was the case here. Uh, so let's see. Common denominator is two. Four minus five is negative one. So negative and negative cancel. So we get 3 over 2 times 16 is 20 plus 12, so 32. So 3 over 32 is our final answer. Whew. Yep. Oof. So that was a long one. That was a long one. But I can't imagine that it would get much worse than this. <laughs> okay, so that's it.